Hey, thanks for joining us here at Shape the System. It's a podcast dedicated to sharing the stories of people who've helped shape the system for the better. We hope to tell these stories in the hope that will inspire more people to rethink the way the world works. Uh, hi, um, welcome, Annie. Thank you. Welcome. I mean, not welcome. Not welcome. <laughs> <Start again. laughs> no, that's perfect. Let's keep going. Um, Annie, it's a pleasure to be here. Oh, <laughs> we're, we're actually in Sydney today. Um, this is the first uh, recording we've done in person, so we're going to see how that goes. Um, Annie, I just want you to uh, just introduce yourself, tell everyone a little bit about a few of the things you're working on. It's not just the, the one thing. Uh, well, um, um, Annie, I think the most exciting thing for me at the moment is that I became a grandmother last week. Amazing. <laughs> So that's, that's uh, a system in and of that's itself. It, yeah, that's a, uh, <laughs> so what I'm mainly focused on. <laughs> no, but I, I've literally just come actually from a Cantu training program. Okay. And this morning we were out there Bondi swimming. So I am the founder of, of Cantu. And really uh, Cantu is a not-for-profit, not-for-profit foundation that really focuses on people, on transforming lives and getting people to move beyond their comfort zone and face fears into areas of their lives. And one of those is um, it's, a, it's a, achieving a goal in a physical space that they never imagined they could achieve. So today, for example, we had a lot of people down on the beach, men and women, who are, even though they may have lived in Australia, their whole lives are terrified of, of ocean swimming right. and facing those fears. And so we're down there training them in a, in a group that's really supportive. There's a lot of connection, camaraderie, yeah. fun, but it's still very goal-oriented. And at the same time, those people, um, as a result of being part of the program and getting, getting professional coaching with, with, um, with support from team captains and mentors and their buddies, are also uh, fundraising for cancer research. So it's a real win-win. Mm. It's about getting people fitter and healthier and achieving goals right. for themselves with a greater purpose of raising funds for cancer research. Right. So I sort of look like it is, it's prevention because we know one in three cancers is lifestyle related. So right. if you're out there getting fitter and healthier of mind and body, that's the prevention side. And by raising the funds, we are funding the researchers. Right. It's an amazing model. I think because we typically think of kind of foundations and non-profits as someone goes and sells some lamingtons over mm-hmm. here. Um, I'm trying to think of what a US version of lamingtons is. Cookies. Cookies, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, Scouts, uh, cookies. <laughs> Scouts, Girls cookies. Club, Girls Club, Girl, like, Girl Guys, so, whatever it is. And they sell that over here and then the money goes to the to the cause over here. And I think, um, I think what was fascinating about this for me was this idea that uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, activities or actions or decisions that we make as individuals and those impact our likelihood of getting the thing that we're ultimately trying to um, mm. defeat as a higher order purpose. And I, I've never really come across that before. I wanna, how, how, did you, how did you arrive at this thing, the, the way to approach setting up the foundation? Well, I had lived in America right. and, uh, you know, a few things that have happened um, in my life which I guess resulted in Cantu being set up. One, my father did die of cancer at 51, right. um, which is young, obviously, and I'm one of seven kids. So that seven. influence, yeah. Um, <laughs> what number are you, me. by the way? I'm number two. Um, <laughs> I'm not even sure what number two of seven feels like. like uh, well, I think it feels like the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> to get I you had to step up to the other one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we were all very close in age, so it didn't really make that much difference. Right. Six under six there was at one time. Wow. Um, but... That happened, and then I ran a marathon with a similar sort of program to Cantu, mm-hmm. and I realised if I was going to run a marathon, I wanted it to be for something bigger than myself because right. it was such a challenge for me that I, I want, but I wanted it to make more of a difference than just go out and do it for myself. Sure. And at the same time, my husband and I had been bol- involved in setting up the US affiliated biotech company, okay. and that company had done really well financially, and so we were in a situation that we had never really expected to be in and I believe that it was my turn to give back. Right. I am a social worker by training, so not sort of motivated by the bottom line at all. Right. Uh, and so found myself in this quite privileged position and felt rather than get a paid job when I moved back to Australia that I would set up Cantu. It's the sort of play on words, Cantu, yeah. run a marathon, Cantu, right. cure cancer. Yeah. And I really didn't have any lofty goals at that point. I thought if I could get 25 people trained to run a marathon, to run a marathon and collectively they could raise $50,000, that would be great. But I did have very strong views on the culture of the organisation mm-hmm. and the values of the organisation. And I think that comes from my, one, my social work background and also I would, 
in setting up um, the company in America, I was involved in the whole HR culture side of it. Sure. And that is always what interests me right. in things. It's Why the people, people do what and, they do and it, yeah, motivation. It's the people science. Yeah. Let's, let's, I want to understand a bit more. We'll come back to some of that. I want to understand yeah. a bit more about about the values of the, of the foundation, the organisation. I guess these are a reflection of your own values as well. They are. They are. They are a reflection, but also they need to be in you know contextual, right? For what Cantu is about. So our values are to inspire, motivate, support, and empower right. people. Right. And so there are all those elements in it. Yep. Um, and. In terms of it being, I don't see it as a fundraising foundation at all. Yeah, it's about moving beyond people beyond their comfort zone. It's about personal transformation. Right. The vehicle for that is, as I said, these physical yeah. achievements, which are also mental achievements. Sure. And then the the second side of that, or the byproduct of that, is we fundraise for a right. greater purpose. So we're making a difference. It's not just about ourselves. Right, right, right. It's about a greater, the greater community, and that's also the purpose. Yeah, and I think, I mean, if you've got a situation where, you know, you're only tackling one part of the problem, you're not really thinking about the, the, the problem holistically. And so often uh, if I think about a, you know, and I'm contrasting this obviously with like a pure profit business, it doesn't, you know, think about how it operates in an ecosystem. And I think to paraphrase it, you war and drive on the roads that yeah. your tax has paid for kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so, you you know, you're taking, by pulling those two things apart and saying you actually need to, like be thinking about this more holistically. And in fact, one is a byproduct of the other. Yeah, I think is a fascinating approach. Just on the um, this thing about the the motivating people to you know, to to you know, push beyond themselves. What was the exact phrase you used? Move beyond their comfort. Move zone. beyond their comfort yeah. zone. Is it is part of the thinking there in, in that if you can get someone to do that in a single context, like running a marathon or the people down on the beach today, that they then start to reevaluate the other changes that they're making in their life? Is that the behaviour you said? Totally. So, I mean, I've seen that in thousands of circumstances and we get many emails and people saying, you know, it's changed my life. Right. And I'll just give you some examples of that. (laughs) Um, One man who was, you know, in his 60s who decided to do our Ocean Swim program, um, program and did the 1K and he never imagined he could do that 1K once he'd done that, he realised he could do something else that he'd always wanted to do. And funnily enough, that was lead, to leave a large corporate bank and go and work in the not-for-profit sector Maybe. because he faced a fear that he'd never faced before. And so, and another other young women who've run marathons or done the half marathon. So, for example, this one woman I'm thinking of, she I remember her when she was running. We were doing an 18K run and she was crying at the mm. end of it. And I said, you know, why are you crying? What's, what's happening for you here? And she said, it's just... I can't believe it's me. I've had this negative self-identity my whole life about not being able to achieve physical goals. I was the kid at school that always, you know, had the fake P right. note. I was never the one picked for games. All of that stuff that she right. sort of carried with her. Yeah. yeah. And so if I can do this, I can go on and do my master's that I never thought I could do. Yeah. And we have a lot of those sort of circumstances. What I always say is that can too, and it's a bit sort of cliched in a way, but it's like life. Right. There are it's highs like and lows. Life. Yeah. Right. It's, okay. There are highs and lows in life and yeah. there are highs and lows in a Cantu training program. You'll have a good run one day. You'll Like today we're out there. We have people literally, you know, almost in tears about the fear yeah. of the ocean. Right. You can't control that, but you have to be able to, to go through it. And what I also say to people is you don't always have to like everything you do to achieve a goal. Right. Of course. And, and often people think everything's got to be fun. Well, no, it, it's not always fun <laughs> and that's not life. Right, right, right. But other days you'll have a fantastic run or a fantastic swim and, and you'll take those lessons. I think you also learn lessons about supporting others and camaraderie and, yeah. and community and lessons about we've talked about the facing fears but also about making a difference and it not just being about you. Right, right. Uh, and that's the sort of the, the second component of CAN2 that, while we're doing this great thing for ourselves, we are also fundraising. And Australians, although it's becoming more common and it's changed in the last 15 years, when we first started Cantu, Australians didn't fundraise. I mean, right. it, it was a, it was, that is still a fear for some people. Fundraising? Yeah. Yeah. As in the act of saying, can you give me some money for this thing that's yeah. important to me or to, important yeah. generally? It's about them often. Yeah. It also can be, and I sometimes challenge people, it's about them. Right. They don't give. Yeah, so right. So why do they expect others? Sure. So that, you know, there's a lot of learning in that as well. And and I do talk to people that find it very hard. I say, what are the barriers? What 
do you need to look at the mirror yeah. in the mirror and look at yourself? <laughs> and take a few mirrors down to Bondi Beach. Exactly. And um, <laughs> We've got a special room set up for you over here. Exactly. And I had this one bloke who was running around the track and, you know, I always say, how's your fundraising going, blah, blah. And, it's, uh, and he actually admitted, he said, I'm finding it really hard because I have refused to support anyone who's right. ever asked me. Right. And, it's, it's, it, and I mean, and I, I, I would actually be vulnerable in saying I've, I'm probably guilty of this as well in that, if I if I look at a cause that someone has and say, well, I'm not so sure about that, then I'm I'm like I don't want a part of that, even mm-hmm. though they're putting themselves out there or or putting some hard yards in to do a particular thing. I'm like that thing's not important to me, mm-hmm. and therefore why would it? You know, why would I take yeah. part in that? Is that is that where that's founded, or is it more than that? I think it's I think it can be that, but I think it could be more than that. Not everybody is interested in being altruistic in any way, right? But what you what you also learn, and this is what our cantors have learned, is the joy of giving. Yeah. And the joy of being altruistic and a lot of what, and you were talking before, we were talking before about the transformation into other areas of their lives, like, you know, facing the fear of running or whatever it is and then doing your your, um, your master's. People have found the joy of giving and they are now going on and, and giving to so many other causes like Oxfam and right. other things because they realise the power and how nice it is yeah, to yeah, give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great. Um, yeah, and we've, we've had people now that have raised 250 grand individually individually by making jams and stuff i mean i'm not joking i mean that's probably an outlier but every so we have all these milestones down there and you know they're raising 5 10 15 20 these are people that never ever imagined they could raise a thousand dollars and so i want to understand a little bit more about the mechanics so we had a bunch of people how many people were there by the, by the uh, today we had 110 okay so 110 people um one of those people has said hey i'm going to go and do this thing that i don't think i can do and mm-hmm. i'm scared to do mm-hmm. and they put themselves out there and mm-hmm. then they attach fundraising to that specifically or is there a broader range of activities and that's one of the things like, no no how, how it works together. is that when you sign up to one of our programs, right. so you're doing the 1K Ocean Swim at Bondi Beach that's going to be held uh, on the 9th of February next year and I'm in a 14-week training program, right. I have a fundraising page and I need for to goal. for that goal. Right. You can fundraise any way you like. Some people, you know, send out the usual email and tell people that they're right. achieving this goal. Others um, make jam. Others um, make lots of orange. So there is lamingtons in there if you want. There's lamingtons in there if you want. There's 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 any of that. There's you know Bunnings barbecues. There's dinner parties. There right. there's all the usual fundraising activities. But attached to that goal, still. That right? attached to the goal. Right. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So and you must achieve. You must fundraise to achieve. That's there's two goals. Right. One is to achieve your fundraising goal. Right. Your target. And the other is to achieve the physical yeah. and the mental goal. And do you think that when people are thinking about people on the other side of that who are, who are looking to donate to those things, uh, uh, is there a is there a kind of an attachment to or an interest in the the you know the thing that the person's facing into? The person who's trying to raise the money is saying, "I ha- am a fearful of the ocean." To take yeah. on this morning example, for the, the sponsorship, you know, the, the donations is much about. You know, acknowledging that they're leaning into that fear is that where a lot of this? I think it's both. So I think on one, some you know, some people will say, "My God, good on you." Right. Um, you know, we we don't have not all our people are athletes, and in right. fact, most of them aren't. So you can have somebody as well who is 30, not an athlete, <laughs> not an athlete, thirty k is overweight, right? And is saying, "I'm out there doing a half marathon," right? And their friends are going, oh, my God, Okay, I can't um, believe you, you know, good on you. <laughs> right. I couldn't do that. I wouldn't think of doing that. I'm supporting you for that. Sure. Others are saying, I'm not prepared to do it, and you're fundraising for cancer research. I'll support you for that. Right. So I think it's both. Some people are supporting the person yeah, yeah. and just saying, you're my buddy and I believe in you. Right. And I think that also can be one of the the fears of people in the fundraising, their own self worth. Yeah, that yeah. They're out there saying, "I might, I'm going to do this," and also, "I might fail." Yeah. So you you're putting yourself out there. It's a whole bunch of fears. There's a whole lot of things going on because you're got to be accountable to the people that you ha- have said you, you, you've told a whole lot of people, "I'm going to achieve a goal." Right. So, and if you don't, there's and they don't get back both ways. Well, there's shame in that. Yeah, you know, there's a whole lot yeah. of other stuff. So I actually always talk to people because sometimes you might get an injury the day of the event. It's about the journey. Right. It's not actually that day. It's yeah. all that you've gone through to get there. It's all that training. It's all of the hours, the blood, sweat and tears yeah. and, and all of that activity. Got it. And then so just coming back 
the, I'm going to um, focus on the word, the journey. You talked about at the start, you know, I imagine this would be 25 people, 50 people running a marathon to raise 50 grand or 20, like that yeah, kind that, of yeah. scale so they, and the scale we're at today. What, talk me through that, Jeff. So, I mean, we, our people raise anywhere between about 1,000 and, and 2,500, and depending on the length of the program. Right. So a marathon raises um, 2,500, I think it is now, and um, a 10K runner raises 1,000. Right. What I love about it is that Cantours, our incredible Cantours have now raised almost $23 million collectively. And, and collectively. It's yeah. the power of the collective. Yeah, We're yeah, all yeah. in this together. You know, $1,000 for some people is a lot of money, but it's not a huge amount. Right. Yet, if we all get in and behind something together, we're going to make a huge difference. Yeah, it's a massive difference. And yeah. I, I mean, in terms of the journey of, you know, getting from that first event, when was that? When, when was the first? In event? 2005. 2005, and then mm. through to now in, 2000, in 2019, mm. a week after becoming a grandma. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Not to bring you back in. Well, I want to understand that journey a bit more. Like how, what, like what were the, in terms of getting this to the thing where it has some critical mass, obviously that's had been away for a little while, um, what were some of the key challenges in actually like, you know, bringing this to life? You know, it wasn't a very difficult thing to bring to life in a way because right. my goals weren't particularly lofty. <laughs> so, but I had, as I said before, this strong idea about culture. Right. So I think I always say, we, we, well, I always knew I wanted to grow organically. Hmm. I wanted to hmm. keep the in- integrity of the culture. Right. I didn't want to build an empire. I didn't even think about the empire i thought about i think about every individual participant Mm -hmm. and the quality of their of their experience yeah and because we cared about the people and we care about the experience and we want it to be really good it struck a chord with people sure and then you we we understood we, we created a template if you like that we could then just replicate right right and that's how it grew we also had the incredible support of the macquarie group foundation okay because the way our model also works is that we want to have corporate partners and generous individuals and business partners who cover the costs of our coaches okay. and our staff, which is now a major cost, sure. um, so that the money that our people raise is go, going goes to, to research thing. or right. and some of it does go to their training. And, you know, I see that as health prevention, yeah. so it doesn't, it doesn't concern me, but we want it to go there. So in terms of challenges, that's the biggest challenge, maintaining a model that's sustainable right? and, and that, mo- that the majority of the money goes to research. And being almost being true to that model and, and in a lot of respects I think you used the word organic, mm. um, knowing when to take that next step. Like mm. you started with a marathon presumably. We started with the, well, the 10K actually run. 10, half and a marathon all on right. the same day. Got it. But three different groups. Three yes. different groups. Mm. And then... Somehow ocean swims. Okay, so what? Yeah, when did that, um, that that wasn't a lot lot longer actually. Right. So running is my passion. Right. I understood running. I can. I actually became a running coach as well. So, right. but related swimming, to this or not related? No, no. Just, I, after this, as a result, I wanted to become a coach. <laughs> so you're doing a lot of running already. I was already a lot doing of other people already like you know what I'm just going to label it. But we um, but <laughs> we have to, everyone's accredited. You're not allowed to just say I want to be right. a running coach. You, right, okay. You've got to be trained. All our coaches are, are trained, accredited people. Sure. And that's because we want to have accountability and also we're getting people that are total beginners in something. They've got to have the skills and, yeah, and absolutely. It, it's not just a running group. We're yeah. not. It's not what we are. Um, now I've forgotten what you asked me, something about. Trying to understand how you went from, you know, the one event with the marathon. Oh, yeah, that's right. Event. So with the swimming, it was the exact opposite. So someone said to me after that, you've got to set up County Swim. You know, like this is working. And, right. I, you know, because the running, I understood the culture of it. And I said, sure, but don't ever expect me to do an ocean swim. <laughs> and my husband, Simon, at that point had done 15 years of them and I'd watched him and I'd watched those people go out of the water. Yeah, I was <laughs> terrified of them. And, what was and terrifying about that? Oh, just the lack of control at the back. I can get through the waves. I just, was, I just looked at those people and thought, how could you ever want to do that? And then, of course, I realised that if I was expecting others to face their fears, I had to face yeah, mine absolutely. as well. So I had to go and do it. And I can tell you the first year it was more like, um, a grimace than a smile because I also have to be positive. I have to live the values. I have to inspire, <laughs> motivate, support, and empower, and I was scared shit. I love the irony. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, then the epiphany um, and the liberation when I achieved it. Yeah. And when I did my first ocean swim, it was like winning the Olympics. That's and true. I told everyone, including the guy at the service station, I mean, it was, um, you know, I understood the struggle. 
And it's that's interesting true. because you went into the into the running part of it as a runner already. Mm-hmm. Like you ran all through high school. Or yeah, and I just – You've always uh, been a runner. And the mental benefits of it were really good for my mental health, so I've always run. So running was this thing, but then it didn't present the thread, which was, hey, this is a challenge and fear I have to face into. Well, the and marathons are ch- – The marathon. Yeah. Okay. So there's always – There's always yeah. a 150 always, kilometer yeah, run. You, you can, can always have a challenge, <laughs> right. the actual – you know, putting one foot in front of the other wasn't fearful, but right. yeah, running a marathon certainly was. Okay, and it's still did the ocean going. swim feel different? Though? That felt oh, like yeah. a different level of fear. It was, much more of, fear. It was yeah. an actual fear okay. of whether that I was going to live or die. Get in the morning. Yeah, you get in the water and all. Yeah, yeah, no, no, <laughs> that was no, that was a real fear of life or death. Whereas the marathon was more a fear Can of pain. 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 Right. Yeah. You know, I mean, I knew I'd make it. I'd always make anything I wanted to do, but, you know, how much pain was I prepared to put in? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in this, the, um, this is more for curiosity, Yeah. Uh, runs, ocean swims, are there other physical fears that you're thinking now or are there other things in, in the program? Oh, well, we then we went to triathlon. Right. Then we did singing. Of course. Because that a lot of people are scared of singing. Um, now we do we did Everest Base Camp. So it's gotta be a challenge. So right. we went now we've moved we've moved on from adventure challenges, I guess you could say, but it's gotta have a challenge in it. So it's we did much of Pichu. It's gotta be high, it's right. gotta be hard. Yeah. Um it's gotta be some fear of death or otherwise. Well, Not death specifically, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, but Fire. even just um the co- like the cold. Right. Like, you know, the Biggest challenge for me in both Machu Picchu and, and Everest wasn't the physical, it was just being bloody freezing, <laughs> you know, like you're camping. So like a true Australian. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but then there's all the benefit of it, the camaraderie, the everyone looking out for each other, the, the support, just the, the goal-oriented aspect but with support and camaraderie. Yeah. And making a difference. It's got to be. And, you know, when we're out there we're putting up posts and, we, you know, we've just... I don't know, I can't even remember how how many feet we, you know, climbed one day and then we'd put out a post and then we'd get a few thousand more dollars because people would be going, oh, my God, you know, you're mad. What are you doing that for? Yeah, and amazing. Yeah. I love it. I just, I mean, singing was an interesting one for me. I, I've got 20 years of, of having sung between oh, music schools. and um, Fantastic. In fact, that wedding that I went to in Greece where I met my partner, I learned opera to sing at the girls' wedding and sang opera for the first time in my life at a wedding in Greece on a little island. Oh, how amazing. And I, I'm, I'm not to, just on reflection, and it was massively challenging. I went mm. on opera lessons for three yeah. months and then. Well, it's the same thing. It was exactly the same exactly. thing. Exactly. No, we could, we could have years. sponsored you for that. <laughs> <laughs> not your holiday, though. Not we not never, we won't say, pay for the trip. I, I, was just, I was trying to understand how far I might have been. No, no. <laughs> and let me clear everyone pays for their own trips. Yeah, no, 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 like, the case. They aren't allowed to fundraise for their uh, trip to uh, wherever they might go. And do you think. Um, do you think I mean, because this is Australia focused. I mean, obviously, you take these challenges elsewhere. It is Australia focused. Do you, is it? It sounds like it's a model that could be breathed into other places or other even it, other approaches. Look, it could be totally. Yeah. But what is so important to me is the integrity of the right. culture of the program. So we go to when we go to new new like regional areas in Australia. Even we prefer to have a, what we call a champion, somebody who's done the program before, because right. we have team captains and mentors, yep. and they're there to support people. They're right. just they're previous cantors that have done the program a couple of times that really espouse our values. And in lieu of them fundraising, they are there supporting others. So right. um, we have our paid coaches, but this is more the support roles. And the ambassador, or, or the, the, yeah, they're, they're the cultural ambassadors right. of the program, right. and they. It's hard to set up Cantu without one of those people. Because sure. we can get coaches. That's not yeah, But yeah. it's got to be a special type of coach as well. Right. And we need people that breathe the culture into it. Yeah. So, yeah, we could. And, we've, I mean, seriously, we've got people living in Singapore now and they often email us and say, look, why don't you set it up in Singapore? And we've got people living all over the world now. Sure. We could. But there's so much opportunity here. Yeah. And in terms of it being a not-for-profit and where do we put our – where do we put – our, our money and our resources, it's cheaper, obviously, here. Oh, I think it makes sense to focus. I, I, I guess more the question was thinking about if there's if there's enough understanding of the playbook, and they're never going to do it the way you do it, obviously, but uh, if someone is in a totally different part of the world could think, hey, there's that's, there's some interesting facets there that, that oh, if totally. we leveraged, we, totally we replicable. do this in some other place. And yeah. I just think that quite often people – you know, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And it takes for someone to, to show you a different way of doing something. Well, I am, um, I mean, I 
used the model I've used is influenced heavily by the one from America. Right. Although I think culturally we're a bit different and we you know we've added things in but ostensibly it's, yeah. it, that's where I got the idea from and I knew we had nothing like it in Australia. Right. But I also had a much clearer idea about the culture yeah, I wanted to create yeah. Yeah. and the people being the primary thing for and us. And did you think that was a reflection of I mean we we obviously a reflection of your values but a reflection a little bit of of how the Australian culture as well. What's the talk, talk me through this cultural narrative? Like you gave the four values, but um, what I guess what defines it in the way you set it up? To me, it's about the people, right? The participants and their transformation, and watching them achieve things mm. is more powerful and drives me more even than the fundraising. Got it, got it. And so one, like getting back to that first point, that the, the fundraising is, is key to making the whole thing work, but it is a byproduct of what we're actually looking for, which is someone to come in and face into something and, and set a task in a 14-week period and then approach yeah. that in a structured, beautiful way and then get to the end of that with a result. And it's all tied in because right. the, for a lot of Australians, as I was saying before, they've got a fear of fundraising. Right. <laughs> you know, so it's 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 very intertwined. They Americans are a lot better at right. fundraising. And I don't know right? I think and, and they per will, capita or think you, they, per, per annual spend or per annual income, I think they donate a lot more than Australians. Well have I misunderstood that? No, I think it's true. They're more philanthropic. Yeah. And their wealthy people are more philanthropic. Yeah. I think Australians, my experience of this, and it's really only anecdotal, is that we're really good when there's a bushfire right. or, or whatever. Or a picture of a koala. Picture of a koala or people or whatever, right. you know, the tsunami. But we what what is spoken of, you know, at a dinner party across America, someone sort of put it quite eloquently, is, you know, who do you give to? Yeah. Uh, whereas we might be talking about, you know, um, um, home renovation. I was going to say it's got yeah. to be a property conversation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's about yeah, housing, whereas they, you know, it's a bit of a status. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, and and I think it's also the tall poppy syndrome, we don't talk about, even if we give, we're quiet about it, mm. and and I don't think we do give enough. So, for example, um, the, there's 40% of people in Australia that earn over a million dollars do not give to charity, which I find amazing, amazing, yeah. really sad. And so I think we do have a bit of a cultural shift needed. And that's where I was saying before about people learning the love of giving mm. and the love of putting themselves out there and realising that that too is a journey and that we can make a difference. Yeah. I think that is also inspiring in the Australian context yeah. um, and people now going on and doing it in a whole lot of other different ways. Even like so today I'm at the beach with one, with two of our, that they were doing the swim program for the first time. One of them happened to be a coach of our running program. They've become friends through the program. They've now set up where they're now doing running for good. Right. Okay. Where they're running for the Wayside Chapel. Okay. It, you know, so they've learned the beauty of it. Yeah, yeah, and they're just magnifying it. Mag- in a different way. Different way. Different way. Love and it. so I'm sort of, I love that. And so just taking this sort of um, more broadly than can too, you're operating within a you know particular part of an overall ecosystem. I'm interested in what else you're seeing here or overseas that like that you find fascinating or massively inspiring. Like it could be a person, or it could be a, another foundation, or another even a company. Well, I'm very quite. Well, my husband and I are quite supportive of quite a few different organisations sure. because I I think social justice is one of my big. Um, passions and it always has been um, ever since my sort of even social work days or before even really especially around women's issues and equality and Mm -hmm. um, I worked in domestic violence and sexual assault so that's always been areas of sort of passion for me so one of the organizations that we're very involved in is Opportunity International and that is about empowering women through microfinance in India and, and other parts of Asia and we're also we are connected with St Jude's, which is another school in Africa you might have heard of, yep. and uh, UNHCR. Um, What's UNHCR? Sorry. Um, I feel like I should know. No, you, God, you know, I always forget the name. It's for refugees. Okay, um, oh, yeah, a refugee council. Whatever it is, yeah. yeah, I always forget the, you know, what <laughs> the acronym stand for. Yeah, <laughs> what they stand for. Uh, so we, we are passionate about a whole lot of different areas you know, that are much more around social justice issues. Yeah. And I think, you know, the Cantu model could also work 
for social justice issues as well, but I think it fits night you know, it fits really well with health because yeah, it's because it's doing something active yeah, related to health. Which we know is good for our own health. Right. And therefore and it's also so that fits really well. But it could equally work with other other um, models. In terms of who inspires me, I think I mean might sound a bit cliche, but some I I'm always inspired by people that are prepared to live values where it actually hurts. Right. So where they're facing real fear of life or death or, or yeah. so like a Nelson Mandela. Right, someone true to their story. Yeah, the and, time. and also that young woman now, Malawi, who was shot yeah. by the Taliban. Yeah. You know, I just find people that are prepared to actually risk real, their real life or livelihood. Yeah. Incredibly brave and courageous and and totally inspiring. They're, they're the people that inspire me, really. Yeah, amazing. Um, and just probably one final question: in in a world where there is a lot to be done, <laughs> uh, other than running, how do you um, how do you how do you stay sane? How do you how do you stay on the level? And how do you? And other than being a new grandmother, because that's probably part of it too. <laughs> well, I have to say, no family, family, friends, yeah, community. And exercise. <laughs> I'm not sure which order. <laughs> it depends on the day. Uh, they're all, yeah, those things are all really important to me. That's yeah. amazing. Um, Annie, thank you so much for joining us. It was um, amazing to chat to you. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us here today. As always, if you know anyone who you think we should interview, please let us know. If you have any feedbacks on how to improve Shape the System, email us at feedback at shapethesystem.org.